Of all the thinkers covered in this class, Bernard Mandeville is perhaps the one who created the greatest scandal in his lifetime with his ideas. Let's see why that was the case. Mandeville's main work was called The Fable of the Bees, and it was published in its main edition in the year 1714. The basic point of this book is given pretty clearly by the subtitle, which says, Private Vices, Public Benefits. So for Mandeville, selfishness is basically a good thing. It's the quest for profit and the quest for honor which encourage us to do things which are useful for other human beings, such as producing useful goods and services, or trying to pursue great achievements. You can think of Mandeville as taking the final step in removing economic and social science reasoning from the realm of the theological. Indeed, throughout much of the 18th century, to refer to Mandeville, it was simply understood that you were in some way referring to the concept of vice. Some key themes in Mandeville are the notion, simply, that desires for profit and honor, or rather selfish behavior, cause us to serve fellow men in a way which is socially useful. But in addition to that, Mandeville very well understood the positive-normative distinction, namely that the point of the social scientist is not to condemn selfish behavior, but rather to try to understand it and its consequences. Mandeville also stresses, or really even takes delight in, what you might call counterintuitive conclusions. This also later becomes a popular approach in economics, that is to take something that perhaps common people believe and show that it is wrong. This point also goes under the more general heading of the seen versus the unseen, which of course becomes a very important topic in classical and neoclassical economics, and Mandeville here really is a pioneer. Sometimes one isn't quite sure if Mandeville is simply playing games with the reader and perhaps poking fun at himself, or if he really means it. For instance, there's a famous discussion where Mandeville defends thieves, he says, well, thieves destroy things, but that also puts people to work fixing them. In a later pamphlet, perhaps his most scandalous writing, Mandeville also argued that houses of prostitution brought social benefits. No matter how we interpret this discussion of thievery, we can also find in Mandeville some early ideas behind aggregate demand economics. For instance, he stressed the value of spending and luxury for economies precisely on the grounds that it put people to work and stimulated economic activity. It may not be that Mandeville intended this point as a kind of active science of macroeconomics, but once he was underway trying to catalog how private vices would lead to socially beneficial effects, this was a mechanism which he came up with. He also had a pretty good understanding of the balance of trade, so he pointed out that if one country spent funds on goods from abroad, the longer-run effects of this did not have to be negative. In this regard, he was a critic of the mercantilists. He pointed out that that money would end up being spent back in the original country sooner or later. For further reading, of course, start by going to Mandeville himself. This is still a very readable work. There are plenty of free online editions. You can access some of those through his Wikipedia page. For general background, it's also good to read an edited collection by Henry Clark, Commerce, Culture, and Liberty. That's a book. And there's a very good book by Kiyohani, Philosophy in the State in France. And she catalogs the entire earlier history of this idea of private vices leading to social benefits. When put in this context, what one sees is that Mandeville isn't really an economist, though he occasionally is using economic reasoning, but he's a social commentator and most of all a moralist and someone who wants to invert our traditional sense of what is right and wrong and also to shock people. Nonetheless, these tendencies led Mandeville to make some important contributions to economic reasoning.